We gathered from across the globe to share our stories and discuss how, through actions in kitchens, classrooms and communities, chefs can contribute to the United Nations Global Goals. Together we stand for ingredients grown with respect for the earth and its oceans, protection of biodiversity and improved animal welfare, investment in sustainable agriculture and farmer livelihoods, no food loss or waste, celebration of local seasonal food, a focus on plant-based ingredients, education on food safety, healthy diets and nutritious cooking, and nutritious food that is accessible and affordable for all. We the chefs, we the chefs, are working together to create a better food. Hi everyone, welcome to my kitchen. My name is Mohadi Itzwing. I'm a chef based in Johannesburg, South Africa. Today I'm going to show you how to make one of my favorite dishes, my favorite sorghum dishes, um, and it's called Ding Lemoroho. Ding refers to sorghum, uh, fermented sorghum, and moroho is um, any seasonal green. Now, you know Africans, we love our greens. We eat them with almost everything. <laughs> so with my greens today, I'm using chumulia, which is a green that is available in the winter. In the summer, I normally love or I normally grow uh, tepe, which is amaranth, and I absolutely love amaranth. I use it for everything. I put it in bread, I put it in anything <laughs> in the summer. So in the winter, chumulia becomes my friend. So chumulia has got a kale-like um, texture, but it's Zimbabwean in nature. It's, a, it's, a, it's originally from Zimbabwe. I absolutely love chumulia. And what I did with my chumulia this time was I pickled it. I pickled it in spices and some vinegar, and I've just left it to ferment for three months before using it. So this is the fermented or pickled um, chumulia that I'm gonna use today for my recipe. Now sorghum. I love sorghum. Sorghum is one of those ingredients. It's one of those ancient um, grains that are indigenous to Africa and have been forgotten. You know, we the only way we 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 we, we interact with sorghum now is um, through beer, um, through ngombo tea. Uh, <laughs> but there's so much more that you can do with sorghum. I absolutely love sorghum. It's packed with protein. It's packed with antioxidants, vitamins. It's one of those superfood grains that we should be going back to eat. So now this recipe, what this recipe does is that it literally brings back the old traditional foods back into the city in a way that young or city dwellers can actually assimilate and bring it back into their plates. So I'm very happy to show you how to make it. Um, if you can just follow me. Before I go anywhere, I wanted to show you this. Now, everybody asks me, Mahari, where do you get your grains from? Where do you get all these fantastic, awesome grains? Now, in South Africa, what we have available is sorghum that has been ground up. So, it's ground up, you get sorghum that's like this. That's already ground up. Um, now, to get the sorghum, the actual grain, there's quite a few people that um, have it and sell it. But my favorite ones is local village. Local village foods are amazing i love what they're doing they're basically bringing all these indigenous grains all these indigenous african grains african ingredients into our circulation back into the city beautifully packaged and what i love is that they work with rural um small scale farmers so they're bringing small scale farm produce into the city in a way that we as city dwellers can assimilate and use it um, properly now what I'm going to show you now is how to, um, to ferment, to ferment your sorghum. So if you can see here, this is my fermented sorghum or ding that I've already fermented. And what, what I have here is I just took my grain, this grain, and I just ground it in a blender, like roughly ground it. I roughly ground it like that. Um, so you still have a few chunks that's ground, but you still have chunks here and there. I love my chunks. When I, uh, uh, when I eat my sorghum, uh, my ding, I love it in the morning for breakfast. And I also love it with savory. I love it with savory. It's got like that soury, um, when you pair it with spicy, oh my word, it's fantastic. <laughs> and funny enough, um, sorghum 
cooked like that, uh, fermented, reminds me of injera. Um, the first time I had injera was in New York, strangely enough. <laughs> Can you imagine? Um, I had it in New York and I thought, oh my word, this tastes like Dean. Mm. And, you know, Tef and, and, and Sorghum are actually uh, both indigenous um, African grains. So for me, it just showed me that, you know, African food is the same everywhere. Our tastes are the same. The palate is the same. We're literally the same people. <laughs> so yeah, let's get on and let me show you how to, um, to make this recipe. Okay. So what I've done now is I went and I cooked my sorghum because I wanted, I didn't want you to spend the whole time cooking and I just wanted to show you the recipe and then continue. So I, I cooked my, my sorghum and how I cook it is I basically just boil it like you would a porridge, uh, boil some water and then add the sorghum and cook it for 30 minutes until it's nice and soft and um, I'm ready for you to eat. So what I did is I cooked it and then I decanted it into a flat plate like this. The reason for that, I'll show you, you'll understand now when I do the balls. Um, the reason for that is also so that it can cool quickly and you able to, um, to roll it into little balls. Okay, so what you want to do is just wet the back of a spoon and wet your hand, the palm of your hand with the back of a spoon. Take a little bit of the of the sorghum. So this works very well with leftover porridge. Maybe like in the morning you had some porridge and now you've got all this leftover sorghum, fermented sorghum and you don't know what to do with it. That's lunch for me. <laughs> so then you just place a teaspoon or so or even less of the morojo in the middle and then just close it like you would arancini um awesome awesome just you know you want to take your time when making this because you want them to be perfect perfectly sealed so you seal them nicely okay yeah, you get up and close and personal with this. <laughs> so, it, so as you can see, we've made the ball. And then we're just going to roll the ball into the crushed sorghum. The reason for that is we're trying to seal in the moisture of the soft um, sorghum and to also create a crust outside. So here's our first, our first sorghum ball that's going to go onto a oil lined baking tray and we're just gonna roll a few more i'll just show you now so we're just gonna do a few more and then we're just gonna put them in the oven now these work well as these would work well if you're having friends over and you know just some not something to nibble on or something for lunch or just a different way of serving uh, uh at home or when you're just like chilling, like I'm chilling now <laughs> and I'm going to have some morocco with dingy, but it's so delicious and it's so well, you know, thought out and it's easy for me, you know, it's easy for me as a sweetie city dweller. I don't have to think too much about it. It's easy eating. It's light. And it's something that could be served um, or even sold as street food. So this is the second ball. And I'm just going to continue until I finish all my, um, my sorghum here. It's as simple as that, really. And what I also love about it is that it just, you know, um, it again pushes um indigenous ingredients but it also pushes uh, the plant-based life so this is so delicious that you even forget that there's no meat there <laughs> and what i love about it also is just the versatility of it and just the simplicity of it and bringing back those old flavors those rural flavors back into the city um those rural ingredients that are packed with goodness that we've forgotten to eat and we're forgetting to eat. 
So, okay. So I've got there three, four balls. Let me just finish up. I'll just finish all of them. Yeah. So again, um, it's important for us as chefs, that's our jobs, to bring back these ingredients that have been lost. Um, these ingredients that are packed with flavor, that are packed with goodness. Um, it's important for us to bring these ingredients back into circulation because these ingredients are the ones that are, are going to save us. They're going to save this. They're good for the earth. Sorghum, for instance, doesn't um, require a lot of water, so it's drought resistant and it's good for the earth. Um, it's one. It's definitely one of those that needs to come back into circulation. Okay. All right. So now that I'm done with my um, with my balls, I'm going to switch on the oven, put them at 180 to 200 degrees, and I'm going to bake them for 30 minutes. Okay, so 30 minutes is done, so my sorghum is ready. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plate it, and what I did earlier uh, while I was waiting for the sorghum to cook was I made a simple salad of grated carrot, chopped up raw chumulia, some lemon juice, um, salt, pepper, and um, olive oil. Simple, simple, but lots of flavor. And I also chopped up some nice herbs in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my plate, put it there. And I'm just going to place my sorghum just roughly in and around on top of the salad like i said this becomes a meal on its own and then we'll just drizzle a little bit of chili sauce over that because it just the chili just like adds another dimension to it so there we go. There's our um, sorghum balls, fritters. You can call them balls, you can call them fritters with a nice salad. Serve it with a nice salad. Um, delicious, it's crunchy outside. It's soft, it's spicy, it's sour. It's perfect, it's perfect for city dwellers. It's one of my favorite, mm. it's really, really good. The sorghum outside has formed like a crunchy outside and, and it's soft <laughs> and it's spicy inside with the chumulea pickle. It's delicious and the spicy sauce on top just complements it. I love sorghum and I'm hoping that more people will love it if they try this recipe. Bye, thank you. Mm. So there's the final dish. The sorghum balls with a nice salad. Perfect for a lunch meal. Perfect for a snack. Delicious, delicious, delicious.